Yes, folks, it's Tales uh, from the Jails here. Today I'm going to talk about perverts in prisons. You see, the problem is uh, you get people in society who are offending against the, the law of the land by committing crimes such as interfering with children and uh, having same-sex relationships with people who are under age, etc. And they get sentenced to imprisonment. And where do they go? They go into the prisons. And who do they meet in the prisons? People of a like mind. Because there's plenty of perverts in prisons, which is what I'll be talking about today. Yeah, a little treat for the weekend on Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Please do like and subscribe. It's down there, folks. Yeah, you've got it. Thank you very much. Anyway, Strange Ways had a, a, a landing. Yeah, it was uh, C1. Yeah, and uh, that's where they held the uh, people who were on Rule 43 by their own application. They'd applied to be on Rule 43, gets excluded from normal location because they felt that they were going to be subjected to abuse, attack, and people very much of an ilk of the, of, of the kind of Charlie Bronson stuff, you know, where he seems to have made it his mission in life to assault as many sex offenders as he can get his hands on. Which is one of the reasons that he's still in prison, you know, I mean, if he just accepted that uh, there's, there's more of them than there is of him, then uh, he'd understand that it's a futile battle. Because the problem that you've got with people who practice perversions is that they don't see it as being a perversion. They think it's perfectly natural. And if you try and argue it with them, believe me, I have. Yeah, if you try and argue it with them and say, listen, what you're doing is an offence, it's against nature, it's not... Oh, no, it's not. They'll, they'll, they make arguments to say, well, the actual, uh, the, they, they actually want this to happen. It's their idea. They're, they're the ones that, talking about children as long as five or six, who are supposedly seducing grown men in their 40s and 50s and 60s. Really, seriously, they argue that. And it's my sincere belief that that is their sincere belief because they actually delude themselves into believing that that is the case. When I was working with that uh, well-known pervert, PJ Proby, he was telling me, oh no, I said, the girls, the, the young girls, he said, they actually do want this. He said, they will initiate it. Well, it is, I tried to tell him, I said, listen, it's, it's your responsibility as an adult to avoid that kind of inappropriate contact and to guide them into uh, enjoying more ch their, their childhood, you know, not to introduce them to uh, your erect todger. You know, that's not the way forward. But you can't get any sense out of perverts because they are twisted in the head. And there's no cure. Seriously. I mean, emasculation would be a cure of a sort, but it's still the head would still be knackered, still be gone. And uh, as I say on C1, they, they lumped all the perverts together in strange ways. And uh, they, was, they had uh, their case files because they were allowed, if they were appealing judgment, they were allowed their case files to prepare their defence. So what they were doing was getting the case files with all the pictures of the abused children and all the rest of it and swapping them among themselves. Seriously. Swapping the pictures of their cases amongst each other. God knows what they were using them for, but I'll leave that to your twisted imagination, eh? Ooh. There you go. Seriously, that's what they were doing. And it's the same at the scrubs. They've even got prisons dedicated to sex offenders now. Is it wood, wooden heart, wooden? Anyway, yeah. Prison with nothing but sex offenders in. Of course, they've got the Hostess Brigade as well, the Beverly Sisters and the Vernon Girls, they're on duty. From the Girl with the Tray, 
What would you like for tea this evening, sir? Would you like a coffee, tea, perhaps? A hot chocolate? Can I tempt you with that? Some spice, perhaps? A little cocaine? Go on, treat yourself, lad. From the girl with the tray. That's what we're getting at the moment. And, listen, this scandal with the hostesses getting locked up. One prison, Berwyn, HMP Berwyn, 38 female members of staff arrested, charged and imprisoned over the last four or five years. That is unheard of. That is not the fault of the individual. That is the fault of the system. And it needs somebody to tell the people at the top, people like Mr Chalk, who's the uh, Justice Minister, say, listen, it isn't the individuals. They do not come into this job deliberately corrupt. They come in and are corrupted by the system because there has been no viable evaluation or health and safety check as to see whether or not it is viable to put these people in that risky position because they're not equipped intellectually or physically to deal with what they're what they're being presented with and and the system knows this because it's throughout the prison estate that individual female officers are being corrupted and twisted by experienced, sophisticated, alpha male inmates. And uh, they're being, eventually they get caught. I mean, if they, if they caught 38, they caught 38. How many more is there? How many more that have not been discovered yet? And you're not telling me that, that the system doesn't know this. Of course it knows it. Listen to John here. I'm telling you, Mr Chalk. Yeah, your system's bollocks, mate. And allowing young girls onto the landings is asking for trouble. And that's what you're doing. There's been no health and safety checks on this. None at all. And I believe that the government is vulnerable here. And action should be taken. Anyway, perverts in prison. What they were doing at Stranger is swapping all the notes with them. And they were bang at it. I mean, if they were into... Uh, acts of same-sex self-gratification or whatever it is, oh, there's the opportunity. Yeah? Banged up with a couple of like-minded mates. Who's going on top tonight? And we're not talking about the bunks here, boys. Right, that's it. Tales from the jails for today. I'm now going to sing to you, but I'll warn you first. Hope you've all got a copy of my books now, because book three, part three, will be out probably around about April, I think. Yeah, Sean Atwood's publishing company, Gadfly Press, is publishing that. So I'm now going to, uh, I'm now going to sing to you. This is a song I particularly enjoy, but not sung by me. I don't enjoy it sung by me. Sung by me, it's pretty crap. But I mean, if you're still listening, you deserve it, don't you? This is uh, originally sung by Frank Sinatra in the wee small hours of the morning. In the wee small hours of the morning While the whole wide world is fast asleep You lie awake and think about the girl And never ever think of counting sheep when your lonely heart has learned its lesson you'd be hers if only she would call in the wee small hours of the morning that's the time you miss her most of all when your lonely heart has learned its lesson, you'd be hers if only she would call. In the wee small hours of the morning, well, that's the time you miss her most of all. 
There you go. You deserved that. Tales from the Jails. Do like and subscribe, folks.